So, what's the plan? We go inside and calmly ask Eddie why he was there that day. All right. Let's try to let him get his side of the story out, okay? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I understand, Mr. Barrow. I'll be sure to let him know. Yes, I have it all written down. Have a good day, Mr. Barrow. Morning, Missy. How do you get stuck working reception? Rose called in sick this morning. I'm covering for her while I try to get my paperwork done. What are you doing here? Just checking in with Uncle Eddie. I'm guessing from the identical features that this is Tyler? Tyler, Denise, Denise, Tyler. Wilson, could you tell Officer Vincenzi that I'll be- Oh, good morning, Allison. Hi, Uncle. I'm gonna take Dr. Torres' statement. No need for Vincenzi to come back to the station. He doesn't seem like he's in the best of moods. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but he's been a little off all day. Good luck. Great. He has an excuse to brush us off. I'm sure- Hey. He speaks. How's Delos treating you so far? It's been good to see Allison. She's been talking nonstop about you lately. I know she's happy to have you here. Hey, been meaning to say, Allison showed us that article you wrote for the Juno Daily last year. You were spot on. The state needs to be giving way more money to youth centers. Fireweed was lucky to have you. Thanks. I spent a lot of time fighting for more outdoor activities. Made some enemies in the administration over that one. But the first time those kids summoned Mount Roberts, man, they were so proud. It felt great. I know exactly what you mean. I, um, volunteer sometimes with the JCE. I give lectures about police work, lead group talks when I can. Wait, really? That's awesome. Yeah, and I don't mean to preach, but the kids in those groups, be it Fireweed or the JCE, they need people who really understand them. People who know where they're coming from and will fight for what they need. Anyways... Sorry for the rant. Oh, hello, kids. Hello, middle-aged adult. Everything all right? Your uncle said you two were going to be knee-deep in trash for a few days. A few days? That's optimistic. It feels like every time we clear out a drawer, two more just appear out of thin air. Ah, uh, yes. You got my sympathies. When we emptied Linda's parents' house, oof, I thought we'd have to rent a backhoe. How is Linda? I feel like I haven't seen her in months. Good. Yeah, she started working over at the high school as the librarian. Pay's not great, but she gets to see the kids every day, so... I bet Brendan's thrilled. Oh, yeah. Happy as any teenager who's got to spend extra time with his mom. Well, I'll let you work. Eh, no worries. You're not a bother. <sighs> Dr. Torres. Tyler you Rowan. Your daughter was good, good to see you again. Today? Yes, You've she gotten was. tall. That usually happens between ages 11 and 21. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, uh, Henderson, welcome home. July 16th, 2009. Henderson. Different Thanks. Husband. It's been a while. So, what brings you two around? My ex-husband. Does she live with you most of the time? No, her father has primary custody. We're here to see Chief Brown. Oh, boy. <sighs> what do you do now? Suspects wanted for a felony. Oh, well, don't forget to read him his Miranda rights. So, is there anything I can help you with? Busy day around here? Well, the fire alarm went off three times in the span of an hour this morning. <laughs> I thought the chief was going to rip that alarm right off the wall. So I got your note. I'm sorry I forgot right. your birthday. I got Incident so wrapped up with Tyler coming that it totally slipped my mind. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Uh, chief Brown's taking a statement, but you might be able to snag him when he's done. But you couldn't stay sorry, Tyler. Duty calls. Um, I had to be in surgery at nine. I was already running behind. Of course. Says here you work at Cottonwood Hospital? That's right. That sure is a commute. It certainly is. And what's your usual working hours? A surgical resident at one of the only hospitals in Southeast Alaska. I'm basically always on call. Ah, yeah, of course. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming in after a 24-hour shift. Did you need something, Allison? Uh, yeah. 
Tyler, shall we? Morning, Chief Brown. Good morning, Tyler. Hey, could we talk to you in private? It's a little urgent. Can you excuse me for a second, Dr. Torres? <sighs> What's going on, you two? We had a few more questions about our mother. Look, now's not the best time. Well, maybe we can come back later then? Excuse me. Come on. <clears throat> Guys, I'm understaffed today. I've got a receptionist out sick, an officer dealing with personal issues. I need to finish taking this woman's statement and I don't have time to chat right now. We were just hoping for some answers. Well, I don't know what more you think I'm going to say. I already told you everything. I need to get back to this complaint. Sorry, guys. Oh, I hate when he's stubborn like that. So what now? Of course, Miss Torres. Where were we? I don't know. We can't just say we know he's lying because we saw it in a vision. <laughs> yeah, we need some solid proof. You mean like a case file? Wait, you're not seriously thinking of breaking and entering a police archive? Go big or go home. Could you go through the full details of your morning with me, Dr. Torres? Of course. I woke up at five and got ready for work. Isabella's father was coming over to pick her up at 6.30. So I woke her up at six. I need breakfast. And as we were eating, I realized I hadn't grabbed the mail the night before. Isabella asked to come with me. So I helped her into her coat and boots before we went out. We stepped outside. It was still quite dark, but she spotted it anyway. Someone, something, was going through our mailbox. Let's My go upstairs, Tyler. Because I was shutting the door. But Isabella is certain of what she saw. She says it was a little kid around her size. She shouted at them, but by the time I turned around, they were gone. A little kid. Mm, that's what she said. A little kid wearing stripes. What about you? Are you sure you didn't see anything? I... No. I'm sorry. Oh boy, fire drills. Everybody's favorite way to slack off. Hey, is that your desk? Huh? I didn't think so. Move on. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Where's Isabella now? At school. She's back at her father's house for the week. Could I get Mr. Henderson's information from you? I think it'd be helpful if I could talk to Isabella. Yes, of course. You coming upstairs? Hey, what are you two up to over there? Everything all right? Uh, yeah, everything's fine. We're just, uh, I was just telling Tyler where the upstairs bathroom is. Tyler, help me out here. Oh, uh, yeah. Toilet emergency, lake water, you know, mother nature's juice cleanse. There's a bathroom just past the break room. Behind you. First door on your right. Forget it, Tyler. There's no way we're getting upstairs out in the open like this. It's too suspicious. There must be another way up. Uh, you know, Greg's was talking about a fire drill earlier. Are there any kind of fire exits? Oh my god. Why didn't I think of that? Lobby. Now. There. Fire exit. It opens up to a staircase on the side of the building, but it'll definitely be locked from the inside. 
If one of us were to create a diversion, the other could slip upstairs and open the door. And since you're the troublemaker, I nominate you as the one to make a scene. Wait, really? Got a better idea? Not really, no. Right, let's go. I guess I probably can't trip the circuit breaker, but I could turn the lights off. Just go. Improvise. Oh, oops. Tyler. In position. What now? Turn right when you exit the station and follow the side of the building. The staircase will be right there. You head now? Yeah, I need a smoke. You should think about quitting. Only gets harder the longer you do it. Yeah, I know. While you're at it, get your sister to stop too. Here. Okay, I'm by the door. Come on. Those garbage cans are like the opposite of bear proof. You know, it's actually really unhealthy for animals to eat our trash. Simmer down. We don't have time for a ranger rant. And I've got the wildlife channel too, you know. So that mailbox bandit struck again, huh? Apparently so. Shit. Where are you? Right here. Open the door. Quick, get in. How old is Brown? 38. Oh, wow. Graduated really young. Youngest officer to ever join the DCPD. If Eddie catches us in here... There's no turning back now. Oh, personnel files, department budgets, but zero case files. Looks like this is where Brown keeps all his personal mail. Looks like he's working with the Office of Child Services on the case. None of our business. You applied to a summer drama program back in 2009? I did, but they rejected me. Michael and I were supposed to go together. He went, but I was stuck here for the summer with no one but Justin Beaver for company. Why? Well, uh... This letter says you got in. What the hell? So he just turned it down? I'm sorry, Allison. Shouldn't be surprised he's lied to me in the past.
Why is Brown on a first name basis with the director of Fireweed? Oh. What'd you find? It's an invoice. Eddie Brown, you'll find and close the final invoice for resident Tyler Ronan. The Fireweed administration would like to thank you for all of the support you've given us over the years. I knew Eddie pulled some strings to send you there, but phew, that's a lot of money. More backdoors and secret moves. Maybe he didn't want to make you uncomfortable. Well, now I feel like I'm in his debt. You finding anything? No. Brown really wants everyone to know what a fine, upstanding citizen he is, doesn't he? He's a genuinely good person. And saying that here makes me feel even worse. Brown really wants everyone to know what a fine, upstanding citizen he is, doesn't he? He's a genuinely good person. Huh. The Dallas Police Force is getting a new officer. <sighs> Finally. This guy has a record. And not a short one. Why is he even in the running? Shh. Eddie has a really hard time hiring people out here. I don't think he has a choice. There's always a choice. Seriously? You're gonna try to hack into his computer? We're here for information. And computers are basically- Whoa. Brown looked at our file this morning. Wait, what? What does that mean? I don't- I don't know. But there's a reference number. R68653. Huh. Tom invited Eddie over for dinner? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's been trying way too hard to get Eddie's endorsement. Does he? Support Tom? He- preferred staying neutral. One of his emails mentioned the archives. That's gotta be where our file is. Aw, look at you. Allison Ronan, perfect daughter. Can we stay focused, please? The police chief of Delos Crossing hosts charity events? Huh? Oh, yeah. The community social. He volunteered to help. And since he pretty much knows everyone, and more importantly, who's called the cops on who, he's in charge of the feeding charts. Let's put the Vecchies next to... Can you not? Please tell me you know what the code is. To the highly confidential police archive? Then how am I supposed to open the door? I spent hours playing next to this room. I'd see people go inside all the time. The keypad does this little tune. Dum da dee do. <laughs> Seriously? Go on, try. That reference number is a good place to start. Let's hit the archives. Yes. Ah, oh, looks like they're finally going digital. Oh, that's right. I remember Eddie complaining about this. 
They're gonna have to resort everything. Great. They've digitized their closed files, but only the ones before 1990. Meaning? Meaning our file is still somewhere in those boxes. Perfect. A room of scattered case files and a half-done sorting system. Yep. This is gonna be so fun for you. I'm gonna go keep a lookout. What? Why do I have to be the one stuck with box duty? Because if anyone sees me, I'll have a better excuse for being there. Reach out if you need anything. R68653. Look it up. Look it up, she says. Okay. 05R68653. That's not it. Nope. You finding anything? Here we go. Looks like a step-by-step -step record of the investigation. Well? So far, I'm not seeing anything we didn't know already. It does reference some other files and audio recordings, though. You might be able to look those up on the computer. Even if our file hasn't been digitized yet, they may already have it in the appendix. Alright, I'm in. You can search by keywords. What should I look for? I don't know. Mary Ann Ronan? March 1st, References 05R62766. This one either. No, that's not it. Well... Zero five, R62, 766. I, 
have her autopsy report. Okay. She... God. What is it? She drowned. The stab wound was non-fatal. What? Here. Bingo. Okay, I need to check out zero five zero one C O M E B R. one either. Uh, where's the damn box? You finding anything? There. What the hell? Brown reported Marianne to Child Services. What do you mean? I'm looking at a fax receipt with Brown's name on it. Sent to the Office of Child Services with the subject Ronan Family. What? There has to be more to this. Just, just keep looking. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Eddie's coming up the stairs. What do I do? What do I do? I'm coming out. No, you're not. He'll see you. Say I went for a smoke. Got something. This is Officer Eddie Brown. Hello, Officer Brown. This is Simone Prue from the Office of Child Services. Hello, Mrs. Brew. I'm calling about the Ronin family. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that we will be moving forward with the case. Uh, I see. Is there anyone additional we should interview while we're in the area? Yeah, um, uh, Samuel Kansky is a close friend of the family. Uh-huh. K-A-N-S... K-Y. Great. Your caseworker, Sandy Black, will be arriving on March 5th. She'll drop by the station first thing in the morning. Mrs. Prue. How worried should we be? Mm, I really can't say until I have a full picture of the situation. Of course. Well, have a good afternoon, Mrs. Prue. You too, sir. I just listened to Brown chatting with OCS. He really did it. He reported her. What if he was just a go-between? He might not have had a choice. We need to keep digging. Huh. Been there. Done that. This is Officer Eddie Brown. Hello, Officer Brown. This is Simone Prue from the Office of Child Services. Hello, Mrs. Dallas Crossing Police Department. Uh, hello? Hello? Uh, hello. I can hear you. It, it's my mom. She, she fell in the water and she's not coming up. Okay, where are you now? Home. 
We're home. Are you alone? Where's your dad? It's just me and my sister. All right, honey, can you give me your address? Twelve Cannery Road. Please, hurry. Just stay right where you are, okay? We're sending someone out to help you. Don't hang up! Dello's Crossing Police Department. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello. I can hear you. It, it's my mom. She she fell in the water and she's not coming up. Okay, where are you now? Home. We're home. Are you alone? Where's your dad? It's just me and my sister. All right, honey, can you give me your address? This is Officer Eddie Brown. Hello, Officer Brown. Uh, I've already seen this one. References 05 R68 MISC. No, that's not it. Nope. Well. <sighs> not this one either. Here it is. Huh. Why is that here? There might be other references on the computer. I need to check out 05 R61 889. Here we go. Shouldn't police reports be straight and to the point? Tessa's name came up. Search for her? Here. Bingo. Hmm. References 2005-201546.
need to get moving. Shit. I'm sorry, Tyler. I couldn't stop him. He's coming your way. Get out. Uncle, I... We didn't mean I'm to... I'm not gonna repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I said move it! Hey! Get off me! You'd rather spend the night here? Come on! I said don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky your family! You're right. Family. And for Allison's sake, we should talk. About what? We saw our file. We know about social services. Why? Why did you turn your back on her? Why did Tessa? Okay. Yeah, you're right. We need to talk. The winter before your mother's death was hard. Delos Crossing was snowed in for months. Most roads were closed and plane supplies were scarce. Everyone was struggling. Especially Marianne. Yeah. She was always just scraping by. And that winter left nothing to scrape up. Even if locals had found time to help her. I don't know, I'm... I'm not sure your mother would have accepted. So, she was struggling through the snowstorm of the century, and you reported her to social services? Tessa came to me and reported potential child neglect. As a sworn officer, I am required by federal law to report the allegation to OCS. A snake pretending to care? To be her friend? Just to stab her in the back when she was down? Tessa helped out your family for years. I'm convinced her concern was real. Of course you would. Just following the law then. Right. Is that why you came over that day? The day she died? To warn her about social services? <sighs> she loved you two so damn much. She deserved a chance. I... I didn't see it coming. She... I don't know. Right there, she... must have decided it was over. I thought always telling each other the truth was our number one rule. Still is, little moose. And yet you still lied. I didn't want you two putting yourselves through unnecessary hurt. But you're adults and that was your choice to make. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Thank you, Uncle. Just like that, huh? Must be nice to have a daughter who lets you off the hook that easy. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but... You have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past ten years what I could have done different. I know I made a big mistake with you two here. And you've got every right to be angry. Being a father? Well, it's a pretty tough job. 
I've tried my best. And I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. I'm open to getting there, but it's going to take some time before we're a big, happy family. I respect that. It's hard work rebuilding trust. But you've got a place here whenever you need it. Group hug? Uh, no. Absolutely not. All right, I'm really gonna have to kick you out now. No rest for the wicked, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Them as wicked as it gets. I'll see you both later. Tyler, what's up? I, uh, feel like I owe you an apology. Oh yeah? What for? Breaking and entering? Invasion of privacy? Sorry. It was messed up. <laughs> don't worry about it. Apology accepted. Just don't ever pull that shit again. So, uh, I saw the invoice from Fireweed. When you were going through my stuff? Right. I, uh... We don't have to talk about it. Oh, uh, actually, no. I'm not gonna let you tough guy your way out of this. You didn't have to do that, but you did. And going to Fireweed was everything. So, thank you. Okay? <laughs> okay, Tyler. You're welcome. Well, see you around then? You know where to find me. Should we go? Well, that went better than I was afraid it would. What happened up there? Long story. Hey, you know the drill. Chin up. Yeah. Chin up, stand tall. a girl. <sighs> I could use a beer. It's noon. Which means that by the time I drink one, it'll be afternoon. I can't be expected to enjoy my pulled pork sandwich without a cold one. Are we still on for lunch tomorrow? Yeah, sure. I'll text you. You kids be careful out there, yeah? You two on your way out? Yeah, we've got stuff to do. You ready, Allison? Yep. Let's roll on. Well, don't be a stranger, Tyler. Sure. See you around. See you later. Allison. What? You feel like shit. How can you tell? Because I feel like shit. What are we gonna do about Tessa? Nothing. Look, we're not gonna do anything. That's enough, Tyler. Talk to Tessa? Why? What are you looking for? What are you expecting her to say? I thought she loved us. Really? Chief Brown, is it true? Is she? Oh my god. Ch children, I... Tessa. Tessa, you need to leave. Come on, kids. Everything is going to be alright, okay? You're going to be okay, I promise. Go home. You can't be here right now. Oh god. Oh, God. 